I've just picked up the keys to my new workshop, which is four times the size of the old one. But not only is this place different to the workshop I originally said I was moving into, what the f is all this? These should not be here. But it's also taken me an entire year to move into this place, despite the fact it's only five minutes down the road. What the f happened? And also, what have I got myself into? Take a look at this. Whoa, 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 hang on a second, hang on. I'm not going to show you the new unit that easily because it doesn't do justice to the amount of pain, patience, and other adjectives beginning with P that I can't think of right now that it's taken to get to the point to actually secure this unit. So in the meantime, I'll explain that all to you while packing this stuff up. The workshop is currently an utter mess as it's not only storing all my tools and equipment, but all the materials needed for the van conversion and all of my personal belongings too. So to begin with, got a bunch of these moving boxes. Doesn't look like much, but there is actually a fair bit of space in these. Look, yeah, you see? Plenty of space, gotta find them. So how did this happen? Well, it's been abundantly clear to me for a year or so that I have been massively outgrowing this space and need an upgrade if I'm to keep this thing going. So much of 2022 was spent shopping around while simultaneously working on a batch of marking knives that I could use to fund the new workshop and the van conversion. After a series of false leads, I finally came across this place, which you may recognize as the unit I shared at the end of my workshop tour last year. Clearly, I was so confident in this place that not only did I show it in a video, but I invested a large sum of money in a new piece of equipment for the space that was slowly creeping its way around the globe from China to the UK, and the only place I had to store it was this workshop. With that said, you'll probably relate to my horror when I turned up to the unit a second time just to get a little bit of footage and some measurements, only to be greeted by what we estimated to be about 3,000 cat towers stacked floor to ceiling. From this point, everything began to crumble and by September, with only two months until the crate docked and needed somewhere to live, I was left with no option but to walk away from the unit and look elsewhere. I needed to find somewhere, fast. Both September and October were spent frantically trying to make progress on the van during the day, while evenings were spent shopping around for new units. You might be asking why I was wasting all my time on this van when I could have been searching for a new space. Well, I had so much confidence that this van would be converted by November that I never ended up renewing my house tenancy. And so not only is the crate due to arrive in a few weeks, but I'm going to be homeless too. And there was nothing I could do to avoid it. Then, just like magic, a workshop five minutes down the road from me suddenly became available, so I jumped on it like a spider monkey, but almost immediately this happened. All right, panic mode activated. I've literally just had a call that not only is the crate in the UK, but it's five minutes away from being delivered. So I've just had to just stop everything, pack up, call the landlord to ask if I can store the crate in the new unit, despite the fact the lease has not been signed. It's given me flashbacks to the other unit. I don't like this at all, but we're just gonna have to go for it. And I ain't got a choice. I ain't got a choice. We just gotta do it. I went back to working on the van knowing full well that I was all in and there was no going back now. To make matters worse, only a few days later, my tenancy ended, my house was emptied and everything was moved into the workshop. My life was officially a complete mess, but now having signed the lease, picked up the keys and sorted out some temporary accommodation brings us to the present. So, I think that's enough for an initial load. Now the problem is, what I originally wanted to do was put some of these boxes into this van and use this to transport them. What's in here at the moment is called the vapor barrier and it's a very sort of thin aluminium foil that is susceptible to damage. So I don't want to put anything in here that's bulky and will potentially puncture that, but small boxes and stuff will be fine. However, currently it has a flat tire and at the moment I don't have any means of pumping it up. Additionally, because I didn't disconnect the internal cab lights while I've been doing all the work in there, I've run the battery very, very flat. So that also needs to get jumped, which again, of all things, I don't have any jumper cables. So I'm waiting for those to be delivered as well. And so in the meantime, we are going to be using this. Oh, big spider, hello. How long have you been in here, sir? I do not like you. No, not down there, oh, you little git. 
Oh, what? Apparently this tyre's flat as well. And change the key battery. And so began the shuttle runs back and forth between the two workshops using nothing but my poor old car. You'll notice in addition to the mysterious crate from China, I'd also managed to get some old friends of mine in the unit too. Right, next load. Let's do some fragile stuff. Because under this, I've got my curved editing mod monitor. monitor, and I am so behind on videos, I just need to get this set up so I can start doing things. 3D printer in this load. This little screen as well. I almost forgot about this one. After the insane year I've had, videos have taken a real hit, which honestly I'm gutted about. But as I was packing everything up, I couldn't help but think of all the amazing things I've built in this space and the fun times I've had in the four years I've been here. And so once the chaos has subsided and I'm fully settled into this new place, I can't wait to get back to uploading more regularly. Gala time. All right, that I believe is the mezzanine floor done. There's a few bigger items like chairs and desks and things up there, but I'm gonna to need to wait for a van in order to do that. So for now, I'm gonna get these boxes done. You might be asking yourself why I didn't just hire a van to do this move instead of continuously use my car. Well, in addition to being stingy, which I won't lie as the primary reason, my van was parked so close to the workshop door that it prevented me withdrawing anything larger than a moving box. Right, finally, I've got the jumper cable. Well, let's hope I didn't screw up the electrics earlier. Yes. Thank God for that. So, I have got a bench load of stuff here, not the wood, just the boxes that is going to go into the van. It's all kind of light, soft stuff. It's covered in soft material. I don't think it will be enough to uh, damage the vapour barrier, but I have got means of protecting it using these two massive bits of poplar left over from the bed slats. I massively overordered when I <laughs> purchased the material, but it turns out that they're the perfect length for the van and it will stop any of these boxes from hitting the vapour barrier, providing I put these bits of wood on their side up either side of the van. So I think it's going to work. <laughs> Give it a go. I'd spent last night getting all of this into boxes while the tire inflated using a 12 volt pump. <laughs> 4.5 psi. But as the cable wasn't long enough for me to connect it to the van, I bought my car around the back and trailed the lead from there instead, which worked perfectly. But shortly after I finished loading the van the next morning, I came across this. Yet, by using my car to inflate the van tire, I ran over a nail and properly punctured the car tire. <laughs> and this was just the start. Let's see if we can still operate this thing. Why is the key not turning? Yep, the battery was dead again. I tried to jump it as I did before, but to no avail, and even tried calling my breakdown cover to see if they would save me. I'm referring to vehicle breakdown, by the way, not mental breakdown, which by this point, I think I equally needed. So I reckon what I'm gonna try and do, because this is registered at this address and I don't have home breakdown cover for this policy, what I'm gonna do is re-register the van to the new address, which is something I need to do anyway. And then this address is then a quarter of a mile out of the range of that. So then I don't need home breakdown cover. <laughs> clever. Yeah, no, it wasn't actually that clever. They knew exactly what trick I was trying Change to pull. the address to a new one. Um, oh, okay. In the end, I ordered a new battery to get installed by an engineer while I packed up more boxes in the workshop and continued doing smaller runs in my now slightly handicapped car. Battery changed. Let's see if it works. All right, let's do it. My optimism was through the roof by this point, but then the van wouldn't move. So I can't get the parking brake to release and I've had a quick Google. Turns out there might be something corroded underneath that's preventing the brake from sliding through. Now I am no expert on this. I've just had a look, but I think I can see where it's gone wrong. So here is the handbrake cable under tension. If I drop the handbrake now, this is where it goes and runs over my camera, isn't it? <laughs> right, and drop. Yeah, look, it's just lost tension. 
it's got to be this thing. That pivot point there, I think, is rusted. And so I'm thinking I need to detension the handbrake and then just give this a whack. And hopefully <laughs> that'll detension it. All right, so plan. I've actually got a car already full of stuff that I need to take to the new workshop. So I'm gonna drop this lot off. While I'm at the workshop, I'm gonna pick up some WD-40, maybe some grease or something like that. Probably a hammer. Let's see what we got. No, you guys are still not allowed to see the workshop. I should have something in one of these. I searched around looking for the WD-40 to no avail, but spent the time unloading the car anyway. And then just realized I was looking in the new workshop for it. I'll probably put it in the back of this van. The question is, where did I put the WD-40? <laughs> Aha, yes. Let's give it a scrub and a spray. Right, okay, that is pretty covered now. So what I'm gonna do here is drop the handbrake so it's no longer in, but then put the van in first gear so it doesn't roll. But then I'm not gonna get myself properly under there just in case for whatever reason it does go and tries to flatten my head. But worst comes to worst, at least we capture it on camera. And so, I don't know, someone might be able to profit from the footage. So. First gear, hammer in the hand. Uh, well, that definitely moved quite easily, actually. Aha! <laughs> hammer fixes everything. Yes. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Just need to make sure I don't run over the soffit boards now. <laughs> We need to get to the other workshop pronto because I don't think I've ever said pronto before. I did my best to clean up all the nails around here, but I'm not certain I didn't just run one over and I want to get there before the tire gets flat. <laughs> After the amount of setbacks and delays I've just had, it felt amazing to be on the road with this thing because it meant not only could I move large volumes of boxes at once, but I was now able to open the workshop doors wide enough to remove the larger items. All right, so I'm here bright and early. Well, it's not even bright yet. It's just bloody early because today, is going to be the machine move day. I've got my dad helping me with that, but the reason I'm here so early now is because I've got someone who is very knowledgeable with regards to carpentry, potentially helping me fit this place out. I'm very excited. I've even topped up all of my tea and coffee supplies for the occasion. We've got fancy teas there. We've got tea bags in a jar. We've got sugar in a jar. Don't tell me I'm not prepared. <laughs> Hello, how are you doing? Hey dude, good to nice meet you. Nice to see you, finally, yeah. nice to meet you. That's it, yeah. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit starstruck and I can't wait for you to see what he managed to do with the place. But that's gonna have to wait until later because this meeting was just to plan things out and I've got some machines to move. Now I was only able to hire this van for one day and it quickly dawned on me that we wouldn't only need to move the machines with this, but also workbenches, furniture and other general big things as well. But with two of us, we were able to work very quickly, efficiently and sometimes safely and got multiple runs completed in record time. However, my dad had to head off at 2 p.m. which left me to do the rest alone. And so by my own sheer will, I pressed on and got the rest of the bulky pieces loaded into the van, unloaded into the new workshop and rushed to get the van back to the depot in time. Bloody hell, that was a rush. Right. And as a reward to myself for such a hard day's work, I cleared the area and opened the present I purchased for myself from China. Some of you might be able to recognize what this is and I'll explain more about how I intend to use it in an upcoming video. But now it was time to get some sleep because I had one final big task to do and I brought in an old friend to help me with it. Hey, you. Dang. All right. This is weird. Yeah, it's very empty. I've got your action camera. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Today was the final stage of the move, which was to disassemble the mezzanine floor. This is a full circle moment as it was almost three years ago that Rob and I turned up to the workshop one day and just decided that we needed a mezzanine floor. With no plan, no experience, and frankly not a lot of space either, we got this thing built and against all odds and criticism we received for not building it safely and correctly, it did everything we asked of it and its materials were now due to be repurposed for use in the new workshop.
Yeah, f Yeet! Oh I didn't expect the whole thing. All right, so in classic me style, I have forgotten my microphone, so we're recording this on a phone. You can probably hear the echo that's going on in here, but this is it. We are <laughs> This, yeah, this is it. Um, oh, that's weird. Literally, I was just preparing to film this, wondering like, why don't I feel weird about this? And now the lump in my throat has just appeared. Um, I mean, wow, we have been here. F this is difficult. Um, uh, we have been here four and a half years and, and done a lot to the space. Oh shit, I didn't expect this. <laughs> it's a f***ing building, come on. I know uh, I haven't posted many videos the past couple of years, much less than the, uh, the cadence that I, I did before. But I mean, regardless of output, this has been my life <laughs> this cold minging spider infested building um i just love this place i love what i do um and i'm so thankful to <laughs> i'm so thankful to all of you this place has a lot of memories um a lot of scars holes in the wall where things used to be marks on the floor where i'd spent hours standing at the metal lathe over there making knives and hours here presenting videos there's an unpainted bit from where the uh, oil burner used to be we've got the pit here that i just god knows i'm not even going to try and open it we got the remnants of the mezzanine floor that will just probably stay here until the building is knocked down a constant reminder of the right old kerfuffle myself and rob had while making that we got the shed outside that is still standing. There's a pencil hanging from a cobweb in the top corner here that's been there for about two years. I'm definitely, definitely gonna miss it here. I don't know what to say. I'm freezing alive here. Um, yeah, as, just guys, thank you. Thank you for uh, making this possible for me. Um, all right, I, I can't get any more words out. <laughs> Let's get this place closed up and say our final goodbyes. <laughs> <laughs>